The Gigabyte Aorus FI27QP is inspired by wings, so overall the design of the monitor includes a lot of fin-like grooves and flares. Most important of all, the main attractions of this monitor are at the back of the display. Gigabyte has included four RGB points of interest, including the logo that lights up, as well as two wings on each side of the back panel. There's also a strip of lighting on the display's arm. On the front of the display, there isn't much going on, which gives the giant 27-inch panel its time to shine. There's an Aorus logo that doesn't light up at all, and a small LED to show the power state. The stand on the monitor is pretty neat too. It takes up very little space, which is great for storing gaming equipment underneath the panel. There's also a large hole where cables can be fed through for neater cable management too. It doesn't have the best cable management I've ever seen on a monitor, as the wires are still out in the open, but it's not too much of an issue. The stand is also quite sturdy with no wobble in it at all. The display is extremely versatile when it comes to its movement. The panel can slide up and down 13 centimeters or about 5 inches. I could completely rotate the panel too from landscape position to a portrait mode. It also tilts up and down from minus 20 degree position to a plus 5 degree position. It can also swivel left and right about 20 degrees on both sides. The general movement of this display was easy and I never had to apply any strength in order to move the panel up or down or rotate it. It made adjusting it to my seating a breeze. Last but not least, we have the ports, which are hidden right in the middle of the display. The position of the ports aren't anything new and are still quite ambitious to get to when I first had to plug everything in. Lastly, we have the joystick situated right in the middle of the panel and is used to change options and settings. I'll get into all of that in a little bit. A big selling point of this monitor is its higher bitrate 3 support. If you aren't aware what this is, most monitors on the market include a display port 1.2 that can only deliver 144Hz at 1440p with 8-bit color. If you want 10-bit color, you need to lower that refresh rate down to 120Hz. However, this monitor can deliver 10-bit color at 144Hz and up. Is 10-bit color a massive difference? Well, if you look at these graphs, you can see when it comes to color, it really is. 10-bit color delivers a more detailed image, and instead of crushing the image in colors, it enables the content to be delivered the way it was designed. If you play HDR content on your TV through HDR10 Plus or Dolby Vision, you would appreciate this feature. It doesn't mean other monitors can't deliver 10-bit color, it just means they can't do it at 144 or 165 hertz like this monitor can. With that out of the way, I need to stress that this monitor felt like a complete package when it came to its features. It has a fantastic refresh rate and all the bells and whistles you would need from a monitor in this day and age. It also felt well-rounded for both PC and consoles. Given that both the Xbox Series X and S and PS5 boast 120Hz support, this monitor would be a viable option for most gamers out there. Speaking of adaptive sync, ideally you would want to use this display with the display ports for the best output on PC. However, if you're looking to play on a console, then keep in mind this monitor only has an HDMI 2.0, so it will cap at 144Hz in 1440p. It also only supports AMD FreeSync through HDMI. In terms of resolution, on a PC you can enable 4K resolution of 3840 by 2160 but it downsamples the image to 1440p. This comes in handy for games and apps that don't support 1440p, but please keep in mind, this downsampled resolution is then capped at 60Hz. The display itself comes with a range of preset modes that I could toggle depending on what I was doing. There's picture mode, standard, FPS, Aorus, reader and more. The custom mode lets me toggle the settings to my liking by increasing the color, brightness and contrast. I won't go into detail on each of these settings as everyone has their own preference. If you are using the HDR feature on the monitor, most of these settings will be disabled so it doesn't really matter in the long run. I often tend to leave HDR enabled, this being for my PC, Mac, PS5 and Series X. On the technical side of things, the Gigabyte Aorus FR27QP delivers a well-rounded experience. The SDR brightness peaked at 404 nits in a 100% window and maintained that level throughout the testing. The HDR brightness was decent but not amazing by any means. 
it hit 407 nits during a sustained 100% window and dipped to 399 nits during an average seed. 400 nits is simply not good enough to display HDR content the way it should be. It is bright and things look great, but this monitor aligns itself with most PC monitors on the market when it comes to brightness. It is okay, but not fantastic. The overall image quality on the monitor is good. This is an IPS panel so there's no local dimming and the deep contrast in games is often ruined by the panel's blooming and glow. It is hard to ignore this glow, especially when playing games that are darker in the atmosphere. A dark cave in Destiny 2 for example isn't as dark due to the blooming on the black areas. Still, this monitor is able to deliver some decent image quality and a great contrast ratio in most testings. This monitor can reach a max of 165Hz when overclocked. This includes VRR support of 165Hz too. However, there was a bit of a blur that I noticed in some games when using AMD FreeSync. It also delivers some outstanding input lag of 4 milliseconds at native resolution and 6 milliseconds when using 10-bit HDR. The response time is also decent and benefits from making use of the speed setting to bring that down a bunch. The speed setting seemed to also help with the blur in some games. The Gigabyte Aorus FR27QP is a hefty monitor with some of the best tech around. I wish it was brighter and for this price I hoped it would have had a better panel that incorporated some sort of dimming. However, its 165Hz supports, WQHD resolution and simple design makes it ideal for PC and console gamers. I had this display hooked up to my Xbox Series X, PC and PS5 and loved every moment I had with it. You just need to be happy spending 14,999 Rand on a display first. But that's going to be all our thoughts on the Gigabyte Aorus FI27QP gaming monitor. We had such a fun time messing around with it. But what do you guys think? Is this something you're interested in picking up? Let us know down below. As always, thank you so much for watching. If you enjoyed, please consider liking and subscribing. And until next time, farewell.